How does one even start such a video? How do you even begin to express what is a villain, let alone the ultimate villain? How do you do justice to a character which is beyond the need of you to do any justice for them? How do you even begin to express the anathema to our existence? A force hell-bent on destruction, manipulation, and the sheer meaning of a calamity. Throughout the last millennia, or even more, this entity has had a say in almost every conflict, or in general, every negative thing occurring on a grander scale. But the question still lies, how do you even begin to speak of Hadoom Vuhura Kaheliak? A being whose one simple gaze or a slightest of whispers is capable of driving half of the regions completely insane. A being who slew and overcame gods. A being whose power is so great that it cannot help itself but spread amongst other realms such as ours. A being so absolutely heretical to the fabrics of reality that even the mightiest of characters shiver at the sheer mention of them. Wuju has had not just one or two things to say on this topic. And I quote, Did you just say Hadoom? So according to you lot, Hadoom is trying to invade your world. Furthermore, he begins to say, What an Elvia distortion? By Hadoom directly? What kind of an idiot? Who would open this door? Hadoom is no laughing matter. And I will end the quote here. When I look at Wuju's reaction from the Magnus, I cannot help myself but get a feeling of him denouncing Hadoom in a very defensive manner. Almost as if a little bit of fear struck him upon the suggestion that there just might be a correlation or some sort of scheming done which he himself was not aware of. Granted, the Hadoom and the Magnus work in two exact opposing ways, but one can't help themselves but think, what if Hadoom knows of the Magnus and uses it somehow? But Wuju, the Magnus, and the error of the Magnus is an interesting topic, which we will explore later down the line in another video. A really good way of understanding Hadoom is to observe the depths of their corruption, or influence, in the sense of understanding where that influence first hits. Hadoom's corruption is one which lingers, it sleeps. Your body will change while your soul slowly and steadily begins to rot, fester, and become the very same nature of Hadoom. The one bent on destruction through the means of manipulation and scheming. Of course, there are examples of other types of corruption, such as the Plague of Calpheon, also orchestrated by Hadoom, which seems to move past the corruption of the soul and weaken, if not even destroy, the body. Another way is to observe Hadoom's treachery towards his subordinates. They seem to treat them as if they're nothing but tools, rather than comrades, looking forward towards achieving the same goal. This speaks volumes in terms of how Hadoom operates. A popular belief is that they originate from Elvia. While that is true from our perspective, as his influence does indeed seep from Elvia into our world, he's actually not an Elvian deity. He was summoned there through similar means of deception and corruption as the attempts to summon him inside our realm. Or in other words, Hadoom is a parasitic god which infiltrates worlds, and now of course his future target, our realm, regarded as the realm of Elyon. You probably have noticed by now how I'm referring to Hadoom in terms of their gender, or rather as a day which is a topic quite skeptical, and all sources name Hadoom him, but one source more credible than the rest of no other than Capris, the immortal alchemist, named once Hadoom as a she. Now this is a little bit speculative, it could be just a weird translation, it could be tied towards Sylvia one way or another, but still, it is kind of fair to say that we do not know for certain. Caphras in particular, who is a Luthragon, or in other words, a male elf, was on the verge of liberation of the Elvin realm post Hadoom's successful infiltration. Hadoom afterwards was capable of convincing Caphras that he was in fact not looking to destroy his people, but be their savior. Somehow Caphras at this moment faltered and strayed from this path, betraying his people, trusting the words of Hadoom and dooming Elvia through his actions. For this, Kadoom blessed him, quote-unquote, with immortality and elevated him to the rank of a harbinger or a messenger of his will. 
In reality, this is Hadoom's ultimate form of punishment, which you cannot really see on the surface. For the audacity to think that you could stand against him, you were to be his pawn forevermore, bringing all worlds and realms closer to their total annihilation. What happens with Capra's afterward is so much more that he is definitely worthy of an entire video. <laughs> Maybe that could be even the next one. Tell me down below. If Capra's has Hadoom's left hand in terms of a role, post the Elvia heresy that is, Hadoom apparently seems to value also his right hand, the shadow snake known as Ibidor. This might come around as contrary, but you need to understand that Hadoom works in such ways. One might think that if you were truly loyal, completely dedicated towards your master with all your might, you would win favors, no matter how much of an entity beyond compassion, let alone that feeling of sympathy, Hadoom is. Ibidor has been Hadoom's most loyal servant through and through, never faltering even for a moment to bring forth his masters into the world marked for death, no matter how many setbacks he has to endure the sheer manifestation of loyalty. To add a punch towards understanding the depths of insanity which Hadoom and his servants can muster, I will share with you this story. Within the ancient kingdom of Urzeka, the topic of sacrifice was not so uncommon for the highest ruling elite. Nameless children were picked for rituals on a regular basis. Their captors did not appreciate their crying screams, as they were annoyed, so they devised a plan to suck away bits of their souls into small little toy soldiers made of metal for the purpose of making the children more lifeless or calm. But one did notice this. Ibidor arrived in a profound act. He decided that the best thing to do is run a commotion by breathing life into the soul sucked within the toys, causing the animated weapons of Gifenrissia. The children's souls encased within the ancients looked for escape and bashed their cages open, and of course, the authorities struck back. They managed to deal with the Gyphons in a similar way many of you slay regularly within the temple. Hadoom's influence, however, is not just seen within the shrines or texts which cultists occupy, and something very interesting, he seems to actually have an Achilles heel. As from what we see, in order for him to even begin a world's infiltration, a ritual must be conducted, one which involves a stupendous amount of sacrifice conducted willingly by a powerful denizen of the particular world with the help of Hadoom's servants. Such a ritual is called the Black Sun. An attempt to summon Hadoom has been done more than once or twice, not just by anyone, but by actual leaders and very important figures of our own world. The explosion of Kron Castle being one of these events, where rumor has it that the ritual went so far to the point where Hadoom's eye could actually gaze upon our realm, Capris having the main play in that. Another example is by Odor and the Ahibs, who were quick to realize however that they were being deceived by Ibidor, and his failure was so grand that they solidified their thesis that the root of all evil for the elves is actually the Camosylvian tree which holds and connects the roots towards Elvia. One thing however is quite certain, Hadoom has limits. He cannot and will not be able to move abroad like a demon he must be ushered in. We are quite lucky in fact that that's the case and not just this, that previously he was summoned within Elvia. As the realm exists in a state where exit is impossible, but entry apparently is. See, exit is possible, but rather extremely near impossible. It is why his servants are constantly looking for the gates which can cause the worlds of Elvia to crash into ours for good, and not simply just ours. This has been a reoccurring story within the fabrics of Black Desert. So you might ask, how does one even combat Hadoom? How do we even get ready for them? In the past, during the age of Urzeka, Xarka was the guardian of our world. His power was so strong that his simple existence caused extreme amounts of trouble for Hadoom's plan to infiltrate our world. I'm sure you might have seen that unfold quite differently in modern times. Unfortunately, we've done a lot of harm to our world by trying to take celestial matters into our own hands. 
the first death of Zarka, the opening of the gates within the Mountain of Eternal Winter, where Belmorn infused himself with a fragment of Hudum later, gates which led towards other realms, banishing or abandoning old gods, political schemes inspired by greed or pride, which furthermore drive the conflict towards the almost as if inevitable demise. So now, since you know, to summarize who is our ultimate villain of Black Desert. His name is Deceiver. His name is Corrupter. His name is the Slayer of Gods, Darkness Incarnate, Conqueror of Worlds, Life's Anathema. His name is Hadoom, and he is coming. <laughs>